All right. If you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I've made no secret of the fact that I've, I've struggled for quite a while to progress the channel into areas that I've wanted to focus on uh, in this new direction that I've been heading in. Mostly due to, it's a, it's a me problem, but due to an issue with bringing brands on board. So when Asus hit up my inbox and said that they wanted to partner up with the channel, me, I thought, that's it. Yes! That's it. I've cracked it. <laughs> I've cracked it because Asus specialise in almost everything that I want to focus on. I thought, think of the laptop reviews that are now possible. They do everything from Prospect mobile workstations through to thinning lights. They obviously do graphics cards. They do the eGPU enclosures, an immense offering of monitors, so much stuff. The possibilities are endless. So when they said, yeah, mate, we'd, we'd love to send you a, a motherboard, <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> really? Uh, but do you know what? Actually, when I sat down and thought this through, this is actually quite an interesting product. And I'm going to tell you why. But before that, if you'd like to help support TFI and the work that I do here, you can do it without actually even giving me anything. So if you're an existing Autodesk software user, or if you're thinking about subscribing up to a new Autodesk license like AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, anything, you can click my referral link down in the description, which also shows Autodesk's current running promotions and discounts. What then happens is that link takes you over to your local Autodesk store, the same page as you would have gone to anyway, but Autodesk will know that I sent you. And then when you renew your license or you subscribe to a new one after clicking that link, I get a very nice referral fee from Autodesk, which is worth more than thousands of people watching YouTube ads every month. Links in the description and thank you very much for watching TFI. So if you're the type of person who buys your PC from like Dell or HP or Origin, right, all right, whatever, you know, you place an order on a website and a box turns up and you plug it in, you turn it on, that's it. You got no intention of ever building yourself a PC, then this video isn't for you. I'm not going to stand here and pretend like it is. However, if you are building yourself a high-end DIY system and it's going to be your main work rig, then what happens is you tend to put in a motherboard, which is on the same level as the rest of the parts in the build, right? But... The vast majority of motherboards tend to be clearly pitched into either the, the hardcore over or the competitive overclocking scene, or of course, pitched into the gaming market, which isn't normally a massive problem, right? Like every board I've ever used in all my previous builds have either been an, an Asus ROG board, Republic of Gamers, or Aorus Extreme, or whatever. It's been fine. Like my current boards, the Asus Maximus 12 Formula Gaming motherboard, I bought it for the feature set that it has and the fact that it seemed appropriately positioned for the rest of the parts in the build. But as a direct result of it being from the gaming world, well, for a start, it's hard-coded with RGB in it, which it isn't a massive issue, but more egregiously, it comes preloaded with bloatware, which I would really rather not have to deal with. It's got bloatware built into the BIOS, and it's got bloatware intertwined into all the driver downloads, which, being perfectly honest, mate, like, I've got no interest in Sonic software that lets me hear my enemy's footsteps clearer. I can't overstate enough how much I just don't give a f about any of that stuff. Of course, there are non-gaming boards to choose from. Of course there are, you know, but they are, to me, and maybe this is a me thing, but they, they're fairly bland and mostly look like gap fillers to plug a hole in the market. They tend to not have any bleeding edge features on them. But for sure, nobody can stand here and say that everything is made for gamers and there's no other options. Of course there is. They just, to me, look like they're a bit cheap and nasty. And honestly, I'm not filled with much confidence that these gap filler boards are going to receive much in the way of support over the years from the board vendors. So, yeah, for me... My perception's always been that the board vendors only really put their R&D resource and effort into their gaming products, which meant that they were the only options that I had when I was picking my board. Until now. Or, or about six months ago. I'm a bit late to this, but Asus have stepped up and manufactured a board pitched into our market, the professional market. It's the Asus ProArt Create 10G. They've ditched and done away with all the gamery bollocks. All the RGB is stripped out and good riddance. What we have here is a board pitched to professionals with a feature set to rival the premium gaming boards, right? But there's a couple of points first I want to cover before we get into it. My priority is more than anything to acknowledge and appreciate the existence of this product line first and foremost. The fact that it's the Z490 board for 10th gen Intel CPUs, you know, Intel 11th gen probably isn't too far off at this point, so we might see a Z590 variant of this sooner rather than later. Backwards compatibility isn't confirmed, you know, across the board at this point. So 
Uh, all I want to do is just put this product line on our radar uh, and let you know that it's an option whatever gen you go in at now or in the future. So second, I'm not going to stand here and pretend like, like this is actually going to make your creator work, design or engineering work go any faster or be more productive. It isn't. The marketing machine has switched gears from, ooh, will help you with your headshots to, to ooh, you know, creators will get work done smarter or, or whatever, right? You know, sure. But in reality, this board is just as equally capable as anything else, but with the nonsense, childish, do not disturb because I is gaming door hangers and, you know, the bundle key rings stripped out of the motherboard box. And for that, I respect and I appreciate that because when I'm building a PC, Mate, the last thing I want are PC case stickers and red keychain loops that end up in the drawer. Everyone's got one. The drawer of, I don't like throwing new stuff away, but I'm more comfortable with strangers hearing my toilet splash than I would be using these things out in public. Everyone's got a drawer full of that stuff. So the pro art line of motherboards. In terms of features, well, there's nothing on here that you can't already find on other boards. All right, let's be clear. This product's thing, its appeal is the fact that all the game bollocks is done away with, but even though it doesn't sport anything super unique, the feature set it has is, is quite impressive. It's a combo of, of things rarely found on, well, all together on one board, uh, and is more than enough for mostly everyone in the design and engineering world. And the board itself, I think they've got the aesthetic kind of okay, right? The, the way it looks. You could argue if we're strictly pitching this at the non-enthusiast crowd, then that crowd doesn't really care about how the products look inside of a case. But me, I'd buy this and I do care. I honestly think the black PCB with the gold chipset and the stealthy black connectors, is it's a safe and sound way to go. But mate, what the f is going on up here? Every fiber in my being detests this cheap looking bare shiny metal IO connector layout. It wouldn't have taken much to just design and clip a black plastic housing over all of that. If that board is going into something like this, then as vain and pointless as some people might think this is, I think about these things. So to some of us, our PCs are like a standout feature in a room. It took me hours to arrange and clip the cables up to get it looking like that. So of course, I would have to think long and hard about putting that up there. But you know, beauty is painful. But of course, the standout feature of this board is, is not unique as it, as it is. It's in the name, mate. It's the Creator 10G. This board comes with what they call the Hyper 10G LAN card. It's a PCI Express based networking add-in card capable of 10G networking, which of course is great and all. Well, it's actually phenomenal if you take care of the if, and that if being you need 10 gig capable hardware switches and routers on the other end. So yeah, how many people back in the day were given one gig network cards in their new PCs at work only to have 100 meg speeds at your PC because your PC was connected to the network through a desk phone. E even my existing board, the formula board, has a built-in 10 gig LAN port on the motherboard in the rear I.O. So to be honest, I'm not sure what the benefits are of having it as a separate PCI Express add-in card, if there even are any, but there aren't that many boards out there offering 10 gig LAN at all, minus the gamery bollocks, so that's a good thing. The rest, well, connectivity, uh, it's acceptable. Look, I'm, I'm not a motherboard review channel and I've got no desires to be, so I'm intentionally keeping this high level. But to me, these are the important points that I look for. So on the rear, it's got six USB type A ports, four being 3.2 gen two and two being 3.2 gen one, not bad. But of course the party piece here are the two rear Thunderbolt three ports, which double up as additional further to USB 3.2 gen two ports at USB C. Now those two Thunderbolt three ports are either going to cause some people to perk up and go, ooh, mate, you had my curiosity. Now you have my attention or like me, ah, you know, it means absolutely nothing. Because for me personally, I've got zero use for Thunderbolt 3 to my desktop and I don't do anything that would leverage it. But for a lot of people in the creative space, who especially people who use Apple hardware, that's a huge deal to have that. So the remainder of the IO is, uh, it's got HDMI 1.4B out on the rear. It's got two DisplayPort in ports for use with the Thunderbolt 3 connectivity. Like I've, I've looked this up and I haven't managed to find any use case for what they do yet. Uh, that display ins, not out. So I don't know, they're, they're there for a reason. So someone's obviously asked for it, uh, who knows. It's got Intel 2.5 gig ethernet onboard LAN, Realtek S1220A sound codec output ports. Uh, and on the board itself, it's a fairly standard ATX layout on the Z490 platform. It's got the LGA 1200 socket for Intel 10th gen, probably 11th gen, uh, six SATA ports, two M.2 slots supporting PCI Express 3.0 with one, also supporting SATA modes. Uh, it's got four DIMM slots supporting up to 4,600 megahertz non-ECC RAM. But another thing which may well make this an interesting choice for some prospective DIY workstation builders 
is that this board has three full-sized PCI Express 16 slots, which were obviously up to three desktop quadros or A6000 GPUs. Uh, you'd have to look at the number of available PCI Express lanes supported by the CPU that you've got, uh, and then how many lanes those GPUs require, but... Uh, that's the fun of building a DIY system, isn't it, mate? Uh, Asus also claim that they extensively environmentally test the board through challenging conditions like high humidity and unrealistically excessive ambient temperatures, which, sure, you know, it's marketing. Uh, but that's why I'm covering this board, mate, because the marketing here isn't about, oh, you're going to be a, a lead gamer, 720, 360, scope, strike first, no mercy. Wow, I'm getting old. Uh, no, this one's like, look, <laughs> we know you need... We, you need to just work to be robust, no frills, decent features, reliability, compatibility. You want it, you got it right here. That's what this is about. So that's the Asus Pro Z490 Creator 10G. I, I think of this less about it being the Z490 version and more about keeping an eye on the future variants of this as uh, as an option for your bills. For me, even if it push, even if it pushes the price up right by like 50 bucks or whatever, I'd like to see an onboard OLED display, which is something I found using quite a lot on my current board for monitoring system stats. Uh, an onboard Eric LED code would be nice. Onboard Wi-Fi as well. And that shroud over the rear I.O. would make this impossible to look past for me. But for others, you know, the three-way GPU support, dual Thunderbolt, three ports in that 10 gig line, along with the professional theme is probably enough for a lot of people to make this impossible to look past. So there you have it, mate. That's the Creator 10G from Asus. Currently retails for around 380 quid in the UK, uh, which I'd say is well priced for what it is and what's currently on offer here. It's significantly cheaper than my ROG Formula board uh, and most other premium gaming boards. So it's well positioned, well priced if you're putting together a DIY workstation on the Intel platform. Right, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Nut the like button if this was interesting and subscribe with the bell rung to catch more pro hardware videos like this coming soon. Thanks very much and toodles.